Hello and welcome to the Discover Virginia Beach podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Trahan, your tour guide to the Virginia Beach area. If this is your first time listening, I am so glad you found this show. Each week, I publish a new interview with locals ranging from musicians, government officials, CEOs, artists, and much more. And my aim is simple. It's to help you discover, define, and then go out and do exactly what you're looking for during your next vacation, relocation, or outing to the Virginia Beach area. And if you're looking to join in on the conversation, take part in monthly giveaways, and get your hands on my custom event calendars, head on over to Facebook and send me a friend request. That's Joseph Trahan. And check out my Facebook group of nearly 50,000 fans of the Virginia Beach area. Don't worry about writing anything down. The links for each episode along with the Facebook groups will be in the description below and also in the show notes. All right, here's the show. Alrighty, on today's show, we're thrilled to have Jarrell Williams, a true advocate for exploration. Jarrell's journey is a testament to stepping out of your comfort zone, trying new things, and connecting with new people, all while affirming the importance of self, love, and respect. As the creator behind the engaging series, this is No No Ramana. No Ramana, help me out, Jarrell. It's called the name is Nama Rama. So Nama Rama started out as uh just to give you more insight on the name, it started as a hobby over about, I want to say, 10 years ago now. Um, <clears throat> I was doing uh, features on local restaurants and breweries and things of that nature where I was still working corporate. I, have, I come from sales um, in different startup companies, and that realm was a total different lifestyle than what I'm doing now. But in any event, a best friend, one of my best friends... I would have him come over. We would do Friday nights on local beer and I would do copycat burgers that I would see in different restaurants. I would remake the burgers myself and we would pair it with different local beers in the area. And I said, man, you know what I want to do? I want to do this as like a business or something. And my buddy was like, well, what are you going to call it? Nama Rama or something. And I stopped and I looked at him and I said, Lance, that's it. <laughs> I'm taking the name and it's stuck. And it's been that ever since. Nama Rama. Nama Rama. I love it. And and beforehand, I was I was Googling it and it literally it came up Drell Williams, Nama Rama, and uh the essence of just going out and discovering and exploring everything there is to offer. And if you hear any screaming in the background, it's just my six-month-old. Um, uh, but nevertheless, Drell, we are so excited to have you on the show today. You have covered a lot of ground, but before we get into all the great work that you've accomplished and projects that you've done, take us back. What brought you to the Virginia Beach area? And of course, what got you to stick around and build your life and your business here? Yeah, yeah. So I am a transplant of the Hampton Roads. I've been in Virginia all my life, pretty much. My parents were military, so I was born in Germany. The rest of my family's from New York. Uh, but I'm the only one in the, the immediate family that wasn't born in, in, in Buffalo, New York. Again, parents were military, so I was born on an American military base in Nuremberg, Germany. Left there when I was about three or four. And long story short, Woodbridge, Virginia was where I spent most of my life as a kid. I grew up a uh, typical suburban kid. You know, I saw a lot of stuff on TV and saw a lot of things, different media and radio and, what, and heard things on the radio. I didn't move to 757 until about 2000 and wow, 2006 um, for college. I graduated high school in Stafford and I always had dreams of leaving the East Coast and going to the West Coast. And it just never happened. Um, But I ended up moving to 757 in 06 by way of ODU uh, University in Norfolk. And when I got to Norfolk, I was just like, wait, you mean to tell me that I have access to like seven different cities in this area and it just blew my mind so at the time friends of mine would talk about you know it not being anything to do in the area and i was finding plenty to do and find and i would make my way out to virginia beach pretty frequently too and again that idea that there were a change of scenery a change of environment and within like a 20 30 minute drive was mind-blowing I didn't get out to Virginia Beach until about 2011, where I I, I was back and forth, of course, visiting, going to the beach, seeing friends, but not until 2011 
was when I graduated college that I moved to Virginia Beach proper. Uh, Linkhorn Bay Apartments, baby. <laughs> um, was it off of Birdneck Road, I think? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for, first off, shout out to the Monarchs out there uh, over at ODU. But yes, Linkhorn Bay. I mean, gosh, yeah, yeah. What, what are the most... Um, one of the best places to go on a boat ride and, and grab something to eat, right? Yeah, it was cool. And also I want to say good morning to your baby, by the way. I got two, I got two, one on the way. So I love that they're here with us on this interview. It's awesome that you got your babies included, Joe. Seriously. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. The work from home dad life that doesn't stop COVID or non-COVID or pandemic. I mean, it's we're we're just we're just working away. <laughs> you do, you do it, man. You gotta make a way for it. But yeah, so Virginia Beach, um, it was different. I I was a kid that would vacation in Virginia Beach growing up with my family. And, you know, as a kid, uh preteen, I would see, you know, stuff on TV, as I mentioned before, as a suburban kid, and just be like, wow, that is such a cool way to live your life by the beach and, you know, surf culture and just like <laughs> all of that. Uh, it just wasn't what I was used to growing up. So it really, it opened my eyes to a lot. And I, I'm a big proponent of trying different things and meeting new people. And again, I moved to the area with no real expectations aside from wanting to meet Pharrell, of course, being in the, the Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach area, which it's happened. It's, it's been super dope, but like, it's been nothing but love out here, you know? And I, I, I leave and I come back and I just have this, so there's something about the 757 as a whole, Virginia Beach included, that just has a special place in my heart. I, I love it, Jarrell. And you have it's had such a unique experience of kind of touching every part of Hampton Roads and 757, which is why we wanted to have you on, because a lot of our listeners here are not yet locals. They are looking to discover the Virginia Beach area. They're thinking about relocating or yeah. they're like you. They they see the commercials. They think back to, uh, you know, back on, you know, when we all used to watch television, uh, which isn't the case anymore. But nevertheless, you have this dream, this picture, this idea of what life in the city is like. Jarrell, I'm curious if we could go back in time to your younger self watching the TV. I know you had mentioned the surf culture. Were there any other aspects of Virginia Beach um, aspirationally, um, you know, with, with, with our rose colored glasses on that you saw that you really enjoyed and really helped uh, capture your attention for? Huh, maybe I want to do some of that one day. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned Pharrell was a huge part of it. Uh, being a kid in high school, this, I was in Fredericksburg, Virginia, so about two and a half hours from Virginia Beach, about an hour outside of D.C. So when you talk about Fredericksburg, people don't really know where Fredericksburg is, no. you know. And <laughs> no, Richmond? Richmond? <laughs> yeah, people know about Richmond. They know about true northern Virginia, like mm -hmm. uh, Fairfax and D.C. and all that. But you talk about Fredericksburg, where are you from, you know? And so at the time, as a kid growing up in Fredericksburg, it was very little for a young black man or a young black kid to do at that time. And my brother, he's three years older than me, and he went to Christopher Newport University, so three years before I got to go to college. And he put me on to different artists from the Hampton Roads area. One in particular being Pharrell and, you know, getting word years prior to, or before that, that Timbaland and Missy were from Virginia Beach and, you know, yeah. the clips from Norfolk. So I was already well into that music scene way before moving here because of my brother, my older brother. So I had aspirations to come here and work in that industry, or I'm going to be walking around, I'm going to meet Pharrell or all these different things. And it didn't happen for me, not that it happened, but I didn't start to like see people that I aspired to meet up until like the past five, six years ago. But sure. what I did, who I did meet were locals who were like on the ground, bubbling, developing, building, doing some really, yeah, way. They were doing some really cool stuff. And you can hear the Jets, Virginia Beach. Absolutely. Uh, outweigh. And that was uh I was funny. positioning the little girl away from a, a socket. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Dad. Great job. 
Um, in the, the Jets, the Jets were a big, you know, like culture shock for me. I come from an area where it's Department of Defense and there's a lot of contract workers coming out of D.C., but I had never heard or seen anything like these Jets until moving to Virginia Beach. They, and it, they're it, literally flying right above your head. <laughs> dude, it was wild. You can, I don't know if you want to leave this in or not, but another reason why, like, not a reason why, but a big reason as to why I, like, got culture shock, because seeing the Jets, it was so regularly occurring in Lincoln Bay. I don't know if you remember this. This is, uh, yeah. It's a 2004, right? When the... No. So I moved to Lincoln Bay in 11, and then I think at the end of that year, one of the Jets actually crashed across... By the apartments. By, by the, the apartments, apartments, right? Yeah. Yep. That was about 2011. Okay, yeah. So yeah. No one was harmed. Weird no. freak accident, but like literally yep. crashed in front of an apartment. Um, yep. actually met somebody that was living there at the time. Um, yeah, third party, but yeah, yeah, crazy it, experience. To, crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. So to move here from right outside DOD land in DC and to come to Virginia Beach, where you think it's like beachy and all this, and you hear jets every day, and then I, I saw that I was like, this is way different than what I'm used to. But all that aside, um, yeah, seven five seven. I knew about the music scene here, but again, I got to meet a lot of really cool people who lived locally in the area and and around the area that showed me restaurants and businesses. And I met some really cool artists and designers. And I mean, dude, I, I, I just had my eyes open and my mind blown. And I was also able to, again, hop in my car and drive 30 minutes and change the city, change the scenery Change You're hitting shuffle. You're hitting shuffle on the iPod. You're getting a completely different exactly. experience. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, Jarrell, um, um, right before we jump into the business part, I, I kind of want to yeah. uh, start by an, an overarching theme as we head into this next section here. So, you know, looking back during your time throughout growing your brand, your business, and, and managing dad life, are there any key pivotal moments that stand out to you uh, where some lessons were learned? And of course, uh, what lessons led to that next experience? How did it shape you? How did it break you? All oh, that. man. <laughs> Joe, let's talk about it. <laughs> open open up. Let's hear Because it's not easy. I mean, you, you think seven cities. I mean, almost two million people now. There's a lot of room for failure, a lot of room for mess ups. Like, let's let's yeah. get into it. Yeah. So I didn't I don't come from this world originally. Uh, I mentioned earlier in our call, I come from sales. You know, I I've worked at multiple startup companies and corporate organizations where I started on the ground level as an inside sales rep. And then I've moved my way up to become like a sales manager of my own team. And we would travel and I've done conferences and trade shows across the country, you know, and I've been speaking the gospel of all these different startup companies. But I've been laid off like three times and it does not feel good, <laughs> you know, where you for the, the majority of my beginning adult life, I checked the boxes, I checked the boxes and I did the things that you're expected to do. And, you know, I, I come from a previous relationship where I did the things and my dad taught me happy wife, happy life. And I did the things that society said you're supposed to do. And I kept getting laid off and things were not really stacking up the way that I wanted them to. And I wasn't ultimately finding happiness for myself. Um, and I got to a point where I got laid off another time. And I said to myself, if it happens again, I'm not going to work for somebody else. And yeah, over, over that time I was working sales and traveling. Namarama was still like, at the time it was a hobby. You know, I was just sure. starting it. I had an idea of what I wanted it to be, but I didn't know where it was going to go. I used to watch Vice Network, you know, Vice Media. I used to watch Munchies on there. I would watch Food Network, Guy Fieri, all those cats. And they were super inspiring to me that while I was working, I would get to travel the country because I was working as a sales rep. So when I would travel out of the country, I would, you know, use my Instagram, Namarama's hitting Philly, Namarama's hitting Greensboro, Namarama's hitting Cali or New York. And I would fly in, you know, a day or two early before my conferences and I would get in town. And at the time the companies were paying for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So yeah. I was, I was a foodie, you know, and I was in a new city, a new state. So I said, okay, let's eat. So I would go anywhere. I would do research. I would look on blogs and I check on different foodie Instagram accounts and just find the, 
the most food worthy, you know, drooly fried burgers, whatever. And I would just travel. I would hit feet and wander through these cities that I had never been to. And I would have the most fun just exploring anywhere that I would find myself. So that's where that local love tagline comes from, where even though I didn't get a chance to travel as much as I wanted to when I was younger, me traveling to these different cities, I was able to find that local love and that local aspect, whether it was like a small business um, community like a downtown or um, a local collective of people who were just supporting local businesses. And I've always made it a point to find those spaces whenever I traveled. So it got to a point where I was traveling and I would come back home and I would still have so much fun traveling and exploring my home state and these different cities that were like at my fingertips. And as I mentioned before, I had a few friends that were just always quick to say it's boring here there's nothing to do and i was like no dude there's seven <laughs> cities here if you can't yeah. find something in seven different cities it's not so much the area it's you. you're the problem um so that was a big lesson right out the gate that don't listen to what your friends are always saying pave your own you know pave your own way pave your own lane to a certain extent and i used to say this pretty often where it was like Forget about the five mile radius around your house, you know, familiarize yourself with where you're where you're moving to or where you will find yourself at that point in time. But once you get your bearings, get out, adventure, explore and try different routes to get home. My partner, she's big on, you know, we've gone that way home all the time, you know, daily go that way. We never go that route. You never know what's going to be on that route. So let's just go yeah. check that out. Don't be afraid of the HRBT. <laughs> dude, this is, and dude, HRBT, like I've seen tunnels growing up, but nothing to that extent as a kid. The, the magnitude of the HRBT is incredible. And if we can hit pause there, Jarrell, I wanted to highlight just how groundbreaking it is what you were doing. I mean, this is at a time where social media in a lot of ways was a was a hobby. It was a kid's thing. It was immature. You're very <laughs> self-absorbed, right? You you're yeah. always taking pictures of your food. Why why the heck do you do that? You, you say grace and you eat. Like that's it. Why are you why are you doing this? And then yeah. do then take it a step further and say, I'm gonna challenge you to, you know, have this, you know, local love idea um of, of just being able to explore and imagine what your community could look like if you paid it some attention. So yeah, yeah I, I love that. No, dude, you hit it on the, the nail on the head, Joe, seriously, where it was like, at the time I would get the craziest looks, man, even from my family at the time, yeah. I mean, people would, yeah, just like, here's your food, sir. Okay, wait, here we go. Ooh, you know, and I'm walking down the street. And at the time people would, they don't. They didn't get it. No. What are you, who you talking no. to? And what are you doing? That man, you look silly. Da, da, da. And I was like, eh, I'm enjoying myself. To where, like you said, social media then was was it was a hobby. It was like, oh, you got yeah. spare free time. Where I had to literally educate businesses and companies on why they should be using social media because. No one, no, at this time, very, very few businesses had business Instagram or Facebook accounts. And I was encouraging them, like, this is a free avenue of marketing to promote yourself. Yeah. You know, you, the users are here. You're looking for the users. The users are here. So create a presence for yourself on this platform to connect to those users. And I'd be in, I mean, the the kind of meetings that I would have at the time, Joe, it, it was mind blowing to be this guy from Fredericksburg, Virginia, who just happened to go to school in Hampton Roads. And I'd be meeting CEOs and business owners. And I would be in these rooms with these key players and shakers. And they're asking me questions like, how do I do this? And I'm just like, at that time, I had realized I had something. It wasn't just a hobby anymore. It was me providing a service and consulting efforts around this new form of marketing and advertising that was not being tapped on in any way that they could have imagined. Now, companies are spending millions of dollars 
in ad in advertising on social media. They're throwing money at the wall, hoping it sticks. And and for a lot of companies out there, we've had a few social media experts on the show. Uh, shout out to um, uh, our, our past guests, but yeah, the fact that businesses are still learning that world and environment. Drew, I'd love to kind of dive into the weeds with you on the business front. Uh, yep. highlighting, and this won't be the entire conversation, but it is definitely one of your most notable projects because it's actually how I found you um, scrolling on YouTube. And so, um, you know, I, I want to, can you tell us a little bit more about your city with bright, your city with bite project, excuse yeah. me, uh, with the yeah. city of Norfolk and kind of what led up to that and what was that process like for you? Um, we could just kind of, you know, tackle a few of the main points there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, City with Bite is the end product of years and years of me having a vision and an idea and just being focused on what it is that I wanted to do. Again, I didn't know where I was going to take this thing from the very beginning, but I had an idea of where I wanted to go in a certain capacity, and I just followed my heart. Um, so it's starting out as a hobby, you know, going to restaurants and doing my due diligence to, to research in different areas and say, okay, this is a new business. Like they may not have thousands of dollars to promote themselves, but they still deserve, you know, some kind of like spotlight. They still, their food is good. Food is banging, <laughs> it's crispy. You know? It's crunchy. It's flavorful. Yeah, absolutely. And I, years ago, I used to work at Geico and one of their taglines was like the, um, the low cost provider. And I, I use that. I take a lot of what I learned from my companies that I work for. And I use it to say, just because you don't have thousands of dollars in your budget, you still have waste and you still are deserving marketing to get yourself out there. So that's when I was using social media to introduce these companies and these businesses. Like you may not have 12 G's a month to, to market yourself, but Instagram and Facebook and Twitter are free, like tap in, they're free. So with that, I started getting more people on online with the idea of creating their accounts. And then I would go to businesses on my own, just that, that research. And then it's, it snowballed into uh, businesses inviting me to their business to, Hey, we're hosting this, come by and, you know, can you get a few shots for us? And we'll, and they would just bring the spread out. I mean, earlier days of Namarama, dude, I'm talking tables of just, dish after dish after and then the food is continually just coming out and I, it'd be just me it would just be me at the time and i'm talking tables of food and i would just be just crushing it getting photos videos as we wow. talked about before i'm you know the guy on camera and it was a lot of fun dude it was so much fun because i got to meet people who were super passionate about their craft their food their recipes their culture and i got to learn about the people behind the dishes. It wasn't just the food. I didn't do it to get free food. I did it because I enjoy people. I did it because I enjoy learning about people. And I, I really get a, like a huge satisfaction of seeing people that I know or have communicated with and they've shared their interests. I love seeing them thrive. I love seeing their, their dreams come true. And if I can be someone who can speak to that, whatever it is that they're doing to tell more people and it gets the word out there more. It's like, I'm happy. You know, I don't, and, and this is partly why I moved away from influencing work because when I was an influencer starting out, it's very different than what influencing is today. Yes, a lot of influencers, they're in it for the gimme, 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 gimme aspect where for me, I, I'm not in it for that. I, I do enjoy gifts and stuff here and there, but by no means that I ever approach a business and say, Hey, give me a free meal and I'll do this. It was like, Hey, I'm going to come to your business. I'm going to pay for it. And while I'm there, I'm going to get some videos and photos. If you're cool with it to use on my platform. And that initial, like, uh, coming out of the gate with this, like piece of local love and appreciation and supporting these businesses I, is, is uh, honestly, I think why I was so supported and why I was just, people took to me and I'm a real person. My dad had a small clothing store back in the nineties and it closed up and to see how hard he worked. And again, to meet people who have in better, better words or another way to say it is just like, they went out on a dream. You know, people are on people who go out in, in the business for them. Hey buddy, people who go out to business in the business for themselves. I was waving to my, my youngest son. You're good. <laughs> people who go into business for themselves are in certain respects going out on a dream. You know, you, you never know what's going to happen active in 
just activating new concepts without even knowing what's going to happen. And yeah, man, it's it's been awesome, dude, to think that it's been almost yeah, 10 years now of this. It's wild. Absolutely. And, and Drell, I I know you're you're too humble to admit this, so I'll spotlight it for you, which is why we want to have you on the show. It's not just because of luck or because you're you're posting the the right restaurant at the right time. I mean, you had a, a sales background. You knew the intro call, the strategy session, the questions to ask, the key indicators, the KPIs, the ROI, all the fun business jargon you knew to leverage that relationship to build that brand and having a pure intent, right? As I mean, if you were out for free food and you said, hey, I'm out for free food, I'm sure you would could have built a completely different audience, right? But you shared your intent, you were true to your intent, and that's what led to all those opportunities, which is why I was kind of just kind of back, I was floored when I saw your, when I saw your, um, you know, your show, The Save with Bite, Norfolk. I mean, Norfolk has, gosh, hundreds of different restaurants and venues. I mean, they, they beat out Virginia Beach in the number, even though the population is so much smaller. I mean, there's something on every corner. Um, yeah. With all that said, you're moving away from the music scene. You're moving away from the social media scene because it isn't what it used to be, and that's fine. Your intent has continued to stay the same. In a lot of ways, I think social media has kind of shifted. Uh, would that be a fair assessment? Ooh, so I'll go. I'll take a step back. I missed okay. the connection between like how City with Bites started. So in in that snowballing of businesses approaching me and inviting me out and me recognizing, hey, this is a viable business. You know, I'm not just giving free game here. This is valuable. So I right. started doing uh, more spotlights, more things of that nature. And then I got into events. Um, I got into events by way of Kevin O'Connor, oh. funny enough, at O'Connor Brewing Company in Norfolk. So I did, I had an idea of becoming like, uh, of uh, a show host, right? At the time, I had a plan to start a video series called This Is Namorama. Did the very first one back in 2015, I want to say, and it blew people away. No one knew who I was. No one knew what Namorama was, and it came out of the gate super crispy, super clean. It was a really fun project, and then it just kind of stopped. Um, but after a while, I met some people and we would try different video concepts and things just weren't working out. And I did it on my own eventually, on my cell phone, on my iPhone. A guy, my one of my friends, Wes, inspired me and said, technology today is way different. You know, you can do things on your own. You don't need a full production team. So he said, just do what you have. My dad always taught me, do with what you have and work and build off of that. So I did. And I shot everything and to your point i i did all the e the research i emailed the people i found the, the the key players i found the decision makers i scheduled everything i planned everything i shot all of it i edited everything i think it was 11 episode show series that i created on my own and i did all the marketing i did all the promotions after that i got into um events by way of o'connor called the slider competition where I would do that for five years. I, I did multiple restaurants across the region, as far as Richmond and DC, and I would bring them to the Hampton Roads and say, if you're from Virginia Beach, I would bring Norfolk businesses or VB, North, VB businesses to Norfolk and Norfolk to VB essentially to give you that idea of what these restaurants had to offer. And I kept doing that for years, collaborating with the Vibe District, collaborating with Suffolk and all these different areas. And then City of Norfolk, took on to what I was doing and they offered me the opportunity to spotlight Norfolk in the capacity of city with bite. And that just completely changed the game. I take it back. I, this is sorry. It's oh. around COVID. Oh, we're, take, we're taking it back. What happened? It's, it's around COVID. So okay. COVID I was, I was, I was doing the, the, the influencer thing. And that's when businesses were like, uh, marketing. No, we're going to yeah. take that back. We're going to increase yeah. our prices and take away our marketing budget. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, and then COVID hit prior to COVID, I got reached out by city of Norfolk about the concept. We were, I, I agreed. I was like, let's sign me up. And then COVID hit, I was managing restaurants on social media along with doing visits and events and then COVID hit and just stopped everything. 
the entire industry just stopped. Businesses were closing. I wasn't doing any work. I had just bought a house and it was like, okay, what are we going to do next? And then at the time, the state of Virginia, the state of Virginia, VTC, Virginia Tourism Corporation, was following my process and my progress. And they had approached me saying, you know, what what should we do next? You know, there's a lot of businesses that are closing. And I was like, yes, it's true. So they introduced me to their wander love concept. Hold on, if I could yes. pause there. The tourism board for the state of Virginia asked you, what should we do? Right. In, Just in, clarify so already- how much of an impact you had made in not only leveraging these brands, but also just making people aware of them online. So just br- humble bragging for you, Jarrell. Please continue. But yes, that's incredible. I appreciate it. It, it was because they were they had already launched this Wanderlove campaign, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was like, again, COVID wiped everything clean. And they were like, so what do we do next? And I said, well, there's a lot of businesses that are still open. So their idea was, okay, we're going to send you across Virginia to spotlight these businesses. And I was like, let's do it. So that is when another like light bulb went off in my mind where I said, I'm going to go and work for the state in the realm of the things that I love to do the way that I know how to do them. And it, again, it just changed the game completely to where I remember saying it, um, paid vacation has a different idea, a different definition now where I was able to take my family to different destinations in Virginia, spotlighting the local businesses, the parks, the museums, the restaurants with the state all while getting paid to do it, you know? And that's when I was like, wait a minute, we're going to evolve again here now. We're going to move from spotlighting just local restaurants in that particular area, and we're going to move to leaving the city and furthering our our reach beyond this area and Virginia as a whole, you know? And yeah, man, it's wild to think back on and to have you hit these little points of (laughs) of development. It's wild timeline. It is insane. And and to think about this, and of course, for our, our audience listeners who are in that tourist visitor camp, I mean, link in, link in bio, check out the link in the description. Jarrell is, is up to all sorts of amazing things. And Jarrell, uh, kind of steering the conversation forward with this, because uh, I know we, we got kiddos to feed and, and nap times to have, <laughs> nap times to be have, hopefully. Um, hopefully. What is next for Namarama? What, what is going on in your 2024 viewpoint? Um, that we can be looking out for um, as, as we look to the future of the brand and the business. I mean, it's had tremendous growth and tremendous scaling. I'm pumped. What's what's next? Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, a new baby, first and foremost, you know, growing the family, getting the boys used to having a sister in the, in, in the house. And that is first and foremost, being supportive of my, of my partner. And um, outside of that, continually still focusing on this idea of exploration. You know, I, my lifestyle has changed. I'm no longer just like the food guy. I've, I've worked hard in that respect in that realm for multiple years. And I just very much still love food and I still have respect for a chef and chef's minds and all those things. So don't get me wrong. All that is still very much. So we all got to eat. We all got to eat. We all got to eat. But for me, it was like, I, I'm a, I'm a true believer in, if I'm not excited about it, I can't really talk about it and promote it and get people on board with what it is because then it's not true to me. And I don't want to be someone who's faking the funk in certain respects. So over the past year and a half, I've been able to recognize that like my life has changed and in that my interests have also changed. Um, so I've been more so focusing on that self-care we were talking about, that self-awareness that we were talking about. Um especially in the the age of social media, you know, it's quick to watch somebody on social media and paint and have them paint this picture of who they are and what they're about, but it may not necessarily be fully the truth. And I didn't want to come across as somebody who again was faking the funk. And I wanted to be able to showcase a real life of ebbs and flows and a real life of, of experience and education. So I'm, working very, very intentionally in curating and creating pure spaces of peace for people to remind them of um, that level of disconnect from stimulation. 
social media is great. It helps us connect with people, but it also at the same time is a detriment to our society to a certain extent because people compare themselves so much more than they should, than they have been and should yeah. be. Yeah. And especially being like dads, you know what I mean? We're like, we have kids who are growing up in this world and to, to see them see other people and say, well, I'm not good enough. Well, I don't have this. And why don't we go and do these things? It's like, no, you don't have to compare yourself to other people. And if you continue to compare yourself to other people, you're never going to have that level of peace, clarity, and, and mindfulness. So working diligently to encourage my friends and family, no matter what you do for work or whatever you see yourself doing in the future, take time for yourself. Absolutely. Unplug, remove mm -hmm. yourself from a certain situation and just give yourself that time to be and that time to breathe. That, that's a great message, Jarrell. And in, in, in the social media world, it can be easy to have a different, I'm going to use a marketing term here, call to action. Um, for, for a lot of our content, the call to action is to, to understand and identify it and then go out and do it or not do it. It's completely up to you. Where social media has the stigma of, if you're not doing this, you're not being a good traveler. You're not being a good parent. You're not being a good uh, host of the city if you don't eat at these certain places. Um, it can definitely uh, create some false uh, expectations within yeah. ourselves and within our community as a whole. Uh, Drew, I'm curious for you. How has community impact the way in which you conduct your business and uh you know, growing your, uh, raising your family, uh, here in the Virginia beach area. Huge, huge. Um, we are very much so still frequent in the Virginia beach area. We're in Virginia beach right now. We don't live here anymore, but we are here often. Uh, my partner was just featured at Heidi joy was just featured at the Virginia museum of contemporary arts. Um, and she did a full blown, a full on workshop there. So to invite the community out to see her at her workshop and see her artwork being featured, if it weren't for the community, I believe in certain respects, we wouldn't be where we are today. I'm, I'm a strong believer in that. Um, I'm, I'm, she says it's not true. I'm just a guy, you know, who had an idea and a dream and a vision. And with the help of my followers and my audience and this community that we continue to build and embrace, they, they help me get the message out there. You know, they, they, they digest the content and they want to share it with their friends and their family. And I'm so grateful that people are interested in the things that we're doing and that we have to say, um, again, those community players in the area, I've been able to collaborate just for example, the vibe district, right. Um, to know Kate, very well and she took on to me years ago and was like i love what you're doing come out to the vibe and showcase the vibe i said i've been coming to the vibe district before it was the vibe district. <laughs> come I to our farmer's it. market come, yeah. come come check out the mural tour yeah yeah, yeah i've been and doing that <laughs> it, it's cool because like i had been doing that and then to be invited back again and it's the same respect of like the city with bite where i've i've been doing this work in the community for so many years that when the powers that be figure it out. They they learn about what I'm doing and they invite me to come back with a bigger budget, with better cameras and a team and all these different things. So community is a big part of it, man. Huge part of it. Um, and again, I'm so grateful to be part of this community and to be able to have opportunities to work with different people uh, locally. It's It's been incredible. <laughs> It's like a pickup truck wheeling a garbage can back in the yard. It's the most efficient way to do that. <laughs> yeah, I like his style. <laughs> so um, as we look ahead to the future, um, you know, we definitely want to encourage our viewers to check out everything you have going on in your social media platforms, Namarama, Jarrell Williams, and of course, keeping up with the fam. Um, and we'll have all those links in the description below. Um, and at this time, Hi. I'd love to uh, – yeah, this is Blake. <laughs> hey, Blake. She's a bit of a diva. Uh, she loves Hi. the spotlight. She's been in a lot of live streams lately. Um, so, so cute. Blake. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> so I'd love to uh, go into our last section here, our yep. rapid fire questions. These questions Let's are quick it. and fast. Um, There's somewhat of a random one, uh, but nevertheless, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Have you ever 
or I should say, what has been your funniest or most unexpected encounter while filming during, let's say, you know, your early Namorama days? Uh, wow. Oh, man. I don't even know, man. I've, I've done so much filming. It's ridiculous. Whether it's on my camera or working with other people, I've done so much. Um... I, I, I'll say this, my buddy Mike and I, every year for the slider competition, we would do a video promotion mm-hmm. to promote for the event. And it was always something yeah. fun and exciting, like silly to tap into, um, you know, nostalgia. Um, <laughs> at one point we did a a reboot of, uh, or I guess a cover reboot of Lil Pump and Kanye's song, um and i got to make these like boxy costumes and looking at them now my kids watched the video and they're like you look like a minecraft character and i was like you have no idea what this is even about like this is way before minecraft blah 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 you know um minecraft copied of, us minecraft, minecraft copied, copied us, us. Yeah, yeah they copied yeah. us and i copied kanye and Lil pump but um Outside of that, same guy, Mike, and I got invited to do a video, a commercial for the Shenandoah Beer Works Trail a while back. Ooh. And we got to be, like, um, adventurers. And I had, like, a Davy Crockett, like, uh, raccoon hat and binoculars. They, they they went out to do, like, a very um, Wes Anderson-type styling, which was a lot of fun. Oh, I love that. I love that. Especially with Beer Fest, too. You can definitely play around with a lot of different themes, I'm sure. So you're traveling, you're going around Virginia, you're checking things out. What is your go-to playlist or podcast lineup or music lineup that you're listening to, or maybe not listening to when you're traveling to all these wonderful places for your various yeah. projects? It's a mix, man. It's a mix. I'm, I'm a, I love jazz. I do love jazz. My dad got me into jazz years ago, so I'm playing a lot of jazz. Um, I do listen to a vast, like, majority of uh i guess what's it like indie type music um, sure sure things that are like not super well known i guess not taylor things. swift yeah no, not taylor no, swift no i honestly i might get hate for this but i cannot stand taylor swift um we're not her talented. target we're not her target audience we're not her avatar yeah. Yeah. She's, it's okay she's talented. Wrong, don't get me wrong she's talented it's just not my partner says good for you not for me you know um i listen to a lot of instrumental i do listen to a lot of podcasts lately my podcast go to right now is jay shetty um i forget the name of his podcast but it's mindfulness and you know health and wellness and things of that nature and then um my partner just got a book from my mother the creative act of being or the creative act the rick rubin book recently so okay. i've been playing that one over and over and over which has been inspiring and just really really awe just like put me in awe and a lot of different things that we do today absolutely yeah it sounds like mindfulness is key and also just like clearing the slate for the next project too because in the creative space, you're always like going 110%. How can I make this shot better? How can I really capture the essence of this place in an eight-second reel? So it's yeah. good you have that time to kind of reflect and simmer down and also just kind of, you know, be present. I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, man. It's to that point we are talking about earlier, like where I'm at now. I've I've done a lot. I've worked and traveled, but to give people and myself that time to just be, you know, you get a lot of work done doing nothing to be honest. Absolutely. Be, be still is a philosophy that is uh, totally underrated in today's world. Yes. Yes. So Jarrell, and you know, obviously you love every single restaurant you've worked with, every single chef you've met, they, they're all created equal and they all create great dishes. But if for some reason you were forced to only have one meal, one type of food from any given restaurant that you've tried for the rest of your life, and you had to pick. You had to pick. No if ands, ors, or buts. Where where would you go to help make that decision? Would you go to the classic soul food here in Norfolk? Would you try to stick with the fried and crispy? Would you stick to the fresh seafood? What what genre of food would you have to hover over if you had to eat it for the rest of your life? Uh, I might I might be a little biased. But 
It's your I life, mean, not mine. If you have to eat it the rest of your life, please be biased. It, it's, it's a mix. It's a mix. I love Asian cuisine. And I'm not just saying that because my partner is Asian either. Um, but it, there's a lot of variations in it that I've been put on to recently. I do also love Latin cuisine. You know, mm. I love mm-hmm. Latin cuisine. Um, so it's hard to say one particular restaurant. But I will say those two cuisines. And then, of course, you know, roots. Got to go down with the family foods and everything. Yeah. I got my, my, my family owns Mama's Kitchen in Norfolk. And they're actually rebranding and revamping their new space right now. Um, but, yeah, it's hard to say one particular restaurant, man. I do okay. love Asian cuisine. I love well, I mean, you know, if you're going to pick one, you pick the rooftop, right? Obviously, you know. I'm going on the rooftop. I mean, we're going to the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to yeah. cancel that one out. <laughs> true, true. true. All righty. Um, you go around a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Businesses are noticing you. People, I'm sure, are noticing you. What is your like first memory of being noticed out in public, whether you were filming, on set, that someone recognized you from Namarama and they came up and talked to you? What's that earliest memory? Oof. I don't know, because every time it still feels weird. <laughs> People still stop me to this day. You're that you're that hamburger guy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, aren't you? You're the you're you're the the food. I know that voice. That voice sounds so familiar. Hey, aren't you? For, uh, we had a baby shower on Saturday, Joe, and I mean, people are there to celebrate the baby and my partner and myself, but they don't yes. fully know who I am. And I, my, my lady was like, "Have you eaten yet?" I said, "No, I'm waiting for them all to eat." She goes, "No, you're you need to get in line." So I, she has me cut somebody in line, and I was like, "I don't want to cut anybody." No, she's like, "No." He, the guy was like, "You're good, don't worry." And he's standing there looking at me as I'm getting my food at the buffet line. He's like, "I know you from somewhere," and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, the baby shower." And he's like, "No," <laughs> and I said, "What do you mean?" He goes aren't you on that show? I was like, yeah, the, the, the city would buy. He's like, that is you. I knew it. And it's, especially at a spot that's like intimate as family as a baby yeah. shower. And I was just you're like, you're stuck. It's not like you can say, Oh, I got to go shoot or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was cool though. I, I, again, so to ask me like the first time, I don't remember the first time, but every time still to this day, I'm just like, eh, that feels good, but it's still like weird, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you know my business? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, that's right. I am. I kind of do. I've been doing this thing for multiple years. Funny enough, I did a, I was part of a panel in Norfolk for the Essence Festival to kick off Black History Month. And we were driving back home and I'm in the car with my partner. And I was like, it's still very weird to me that like the response to me is, is like positive and cool. And she's like, I don't know why you call it weird because people still appreciate you out here and People really respect you out here. And to a certain extent, I look at it, this is her, I look at it as like a celebrity leaving and then coming back. And I said, for you to put it that way, just so plainly for me, it's so affirming because I've always dreamt of like, I've seen people, you know, who've been from the area and they leave and they come back and they get love. And it is really endearing, Joe. It really is to just walk around and just see people and, have great conversations and they get excited to just want to take pictures with me and stuff. And it makes my heart smile every single time. Absolutely. They're going out, they're practicing love every day, everywhere, especially when they see the inspiration behind it all throughout. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Um, with that said, I'd love to roll out the virtual red carpet for you. Um, this is your time to share any special projects or any teasers that you'd like to leave the audience with. The floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you guys so much for letting me spend this time with you this morning. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, the brand is called Namarama. It's N-O-M-A-R-A-M-A. I used to say it's a mouthful. It's supposed to be like nom, 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 nom. Um, but these days, I'm less so much the food guy, but more so still hungry for adventure, hungry for knowledge, and just all things local love. You can find me on Instagram. You can Google me, Namarama, and Jarell, Jarell Namarama. Uh, be on the lookout. I just did a show with PBS, WHRO affiliate uh, on environmental science called spotlight earth so that should be coming out here shortly um outside of that be putting more steam behind my partner's endeavors under the brand high joy love as i mentioned she was just featured at the museum of contemporary arts in virginia beach so we got a lot of things planned for her there's a gift shop coming to the website namarama.com 
And outside of that, just you can catch me outside, maybe climbing a tree, wading through a creek with my boys and holding my baby girl here shortly. Um, much love. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day and have fun being a, a, a girl dad, man. Teach me the way. Thank ways. you, Joel. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to our dedicated listeners for checking out another episode of Discover Virginia Beach Podcast. We'll see you all on another episode very soon.